Hello sellers, thank you for taking time to watch this video. This video is going to go over the exclusive uh, right to sell marketing agreement and as well as the disclosures that go along with that in the packet. Um, this video is meant to give you an overview. I do encourage you to grab a cup of coffee because it is going to be a lengthy video uh, as well as a pad of paper and pen and jot down any questions that you may have along the way. But we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, so lines like one through six, this basically states that um, the agreement is between my brokerage, Century 21 Affiliated, my manager is Cookie Hansen, and myself, I'm your designated agent. And then of course, your name's on the right-hand side. Um, line seven is, states that the property is in your name, or if you have it in the name of a trust or a company, please let me know that. Uh, moving to lines 11 through 14, it just this is the uh, property address as well as the PIN number. Um, 15 through 18, this is regarding parking. And for the most part, this would be applicable if you had like a condo in Chicago where the parking spaces were deeded separately. So for the most part, does not apply to Farm and Ranch. <laughs> Um, terms and conditions. This is the starting and stopping date of the listing agreement. And many times I will fill, fill in the exact day of the start just because I'll know exactly when the photos are ready and when I have the description ready. Um, but I do ask for between a six month and a one year contract. Depends on the property, depends on where we start with listing. So that is negotiable. Um, the next paragraph is just stating that we have to show the property to anybody who would want to see it as long as they're qualified. We cannot discriminate due to race, religion, etc. So as long as their money is green, that's what we're looking for. Um, marketing price, we will fill that in after we, you know, discuss it fully. Um, and I'm sure I've done the marketing uh, market analysis for you already by now if you're watching this. Uh, let's see. This states here that the possession of the property will be given at the time of closing. That is something that is negotiable during the purchase contract negotiations. So if you need extra time to move out, um, that is something that can be worked out. Let's see. Fixtures and personal property. So I'll have you go through this list and check anything that you know for certain you are going to leave with the property if you are unsure if you're taking it or not or if the property doesn't have it of course leave the uh, box unchecked then items 46 is other items included and when it comes to farm properties this could be a laundry list um, we want to get specific here in terms of well examples would be a hot tub or a pool table that you know you don't want to have to move. Um, or say it's farm equipment, something of that nature. Uh, on the flip side, the following line, items that are not included, again, could be a pool table or a hot tub. It might be uh, things that somebody might assume is included, like some type of shelving that might appear to be built in but, but is not, or something that is sentimental. I've had like, oh, some people had uh, a light in a dining room table, or excuse me, in a dining room that they wanted to take with them. So um, that particular fixture was not included, but they replaced it with something else. So try to take some time and really think about these two lines because I've had multiple listings where the personal property and what's included, what isn't, it gets messy. So I want to be as specific as possible. Um, and then on line 49, basically states that everything that you checked above or are including is functioning except, and the line is for the except item. So if something is not working, then we need to list it there. Um, home warranty that's something I typically leave blank. I don't have sellers offer that ahead of time just because I don't want to spend your money ahead of time. And if a buyer really wants a home warranty, they can ask for it at the time of negotiations, which, you know, if they give you a full price offer, then yeah, why not buy them a home warranty? But if they 
make you an offer you're not real happy with, but ask for a home warranty, they can always buy one themselves. So uh, let's see, paragraph seven, designated agent. Again, it would be me and my entire farm ranch team, which currently includes my assistant, Amy Roach, and my buyer's agent, Karen Monkmeyer. Uh, moving on to page two, possibility of dual agency. And this is super important, again, because, I mean, it is important no matter what, but because we specialize, there is a higher chance of me being a dual agent. And technically, when I say me, it is does include my entire team because the state of Illinois looks at a team as if we are one person. So say, for example, Karen brings in a buyer, um, off of a lead that came in from some of the marketing that I do, and they want to make an offer. Um, you can either allow us to be dual agents or not, but do know that if you allow us to be dual agents, we cannot help either side negotiate. And that's the biggest, um, that's the biggest thing to know. Um, so if you're if you're good with negotiations, if you have a, a feeling for you know what you want as a bottom line for your property, then it should be okay for us to be dual agents. Um, but if you really want our assistance in negotiating, then, um, then I would say do not allow us to be dual agents. Now that does not, it still allows us to show the property, um, but we would just have to refer that buyer out to a different agent then if they wanted to make an offer. Um, I'm happy to talk to you further about that in length. I've had knock on wood, all of my dual agency deals that I've done in the past have turned out to be some of my favorite deals just because I feel like they've been feel good transactions and not that every transaction has to be a feel good transaction, but you know, when we have happy buyers and happy sellers, it's just easier all along. Um, the, oh, one thing to mention with regards to negotiations and whatnot um, with dual agency, what we can do is give the buyer closed sales, uh, like I would have given you on the market analysis already. But what we cannot do is do the, uh, the adjustments and suggest a price for them to offer. Um, I have actually had situations, though, where um, sellers have allowed me to disclose my adjusted prices, but maybe not my final price. So again, a lot of the has to do with what you and or the buyer may allow us to disclose. I mean, if both parties are an open book, then great. But if, if we're trying to really play the negotiation game, then, you know, um, that's a little tougher deal. But again, happy to talk to you about that further. Uh, let's see. All right, moving on, seller's duties. Um, basically, making sure that the property is accessible with proper notice, maintaining it for showings, um, you know, providing any information that I may need or your attorney may need in a, in a timely manner. So, um, and then of course, I mean, you can read this list, it's pretty self-explanatory, but just making sure there's no um, uh, you know, boundary or lot line disputes or anything that would prevent you from selling the property. And then I'll flip it over to, let's see. Um, the top of page three gives a yes, no box, uh, asking if it's okay for potential buyers to take additional uh, video and or photos of the property. And I typically recommend no, because in theory, they could post that on social media. And, um, you know, we just, we don't need that because I will have already taken, you know, plenty of photos, uh, Matterport tour, uh, et cetera. The exception would be um, if somebody is, say, for example, out of town and somebody wants to FaceTime uh, you know, a spouse or whatnot and walk through the property. That's, that's a little different. Um, let's see. Paragraph 10, notice uh, regarding buyer offer letters. That is what typically happens in a multiple offer situation where buyers will write you a personal letter to try to appeal to you, uh, your emotions. And long story short, um, we can forward them if you would like to see them. However, we recommend not because if there's anything in that letter that gives any kind of hint as to their race, religion, family status, and you 
choose a different buyer, then they may it may come back to you and they may claim discriminatory reasons. So again, we recommend that you do not accept them. Uh, representation of buyers and their confidentiality, um, 11 and 12. Of course, um, for the most part, Karen's going to be representing the buyers um, and their information stays confidential, as does yours. And we are only allowed to share it with uh, the other side if uh, we are allowed or, you know, if you give us permission. Uh, if another, moving on to paragraph 13, if another agent from Century 21 affiliated shows the property and writes an offer, um, this does not constitute dual agency. So just want to make that clear. Um, and of course, you must give your consent for me to represent other sellers. Um, I do have multiple listings and it's hard to make a living if I just had one at a time. So I do try to split my time evenly, give everybody the same amount of attention. Um, but yes, I do have other listings. Brokerage fee, uh, line 15, this is, uh, so the brokerage fee is 6% and I split it uh, three and a half to the listing side, two and a half to the buyer's side because I have uh, significant uh, expenses for photos and marketing. Um, in the in that paragraph, there talks about a plus and minus 300. That's all incorporated in the 6%. It's not an additional 300, so do know that. Um, on line 166, there's a blank there. If property is sold within X amount of days from the expiration date, that's just what they call a protection period. So if somebody came to see your property and decided against it at the time, and then your listing expired, but then they came back, say, within 30 days and said, oh, yeah, we're interested and you are still willing to sell the property, then we can certainly put the deal together, but you will still owe us the uh, brokerage fee. Uh, let's see, paragraph 16 uh, asks about cooperation and compensation involving non-participants. And basically, the, a non-participant would be considered somebody who does not belong to, like, my realtor association. Um, as long as they're licensed in Illinois, yes, we want to allow them to show the property. So we recommend checking yes there. Uh, paragraph 17, marketing authorization. Um just states that, you know, you understand that I will be marketing your property um, in multiple ways. I mean, things as simple as a sign up to, of course, uh, internet uh, listings and the, which kind of goes down into the next paragraph, 18, the, once it's on the MLS, it does get syndicated out to multiple other websites like your uh, Zillow and Realtor.com, and of course, Century 21, etc. cetera. Um, on line 207, we want to check that you do want the property on the internet. 208, you do want the address to be displayed on the internet. Uh, 209, you do not give permission for reviews because sometimes people aren't so nice. Um, and you do not want any automated estimates of value. Now, that said, I cannot control Zillow. So um, there are some sites apparently we can control, but do know that I, I can't control Zillow. Um, title, insurance, and survey. These are a couple of seller expenses that should have been on your net proceeds sheet. Um, I typically check line 234, which states that your uh, attorney, well, it says seller or seller's attorney, but of course, first and foremost, I always recommend people use an attorney to close a real estate transaction. As a matter of fact, I will not close one without an attorney representing my client. Um, there's just so much that could go wrong, and that is a video in and of itself. But long story short, if you hire a real estate attorney, um, they are very used to making all of the arrangements needed to get you to the closing table, and a couple of those things include ordering title insurance and a survey for you. Uh, let's see. Then we are going on to... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, lines 260 through 266. Um Please read these. Most of these are always like that there have not been improvements with these farm and ranch properties, and particularly the last two that you are not within special assessments areas. 
Um, so I may typically, I mean, I will check that these are not, but if they are, please let me know so I can correct that. Um, limitations. So it is my duty to list and market your property and try to get you a buyer. Um, it does not mean that I'm going to come over and mow your grass. I'm so sorry. Um, or help you maintain the property. Minimum services. Um, of course, I'm going to present all offers, going to help negotiate, assuming I'm not dual agent, and answer any questions relating to the transaction. Um, there is so much more than these three things that they state here, but it's minimum services for you. Uh, let's see, taxes and assessments. So again, these are a couple of check boxes that are typically is not or are not because it has to do with special assessments and condos. And so therefore with the farm ranch properties, it just doesn't pertain. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and skip to pay, top of page six, the earnest money. Um, I'll have you initial by paragraph A, where it states that the earnest money will be held by my brokerage, Century 21, in an escrow account. Um, that is very typical. If by chance you want it held elsewhere, we can do that, but this is uh, simple and easy to do it that way. Um, amendments. So if there's any changes to this listing agreement, it just states that electronic or fax signatures are acceptable. And actually that's the same case once we get your property under contract with uh, the actual purchase contract, we usually do digital signatures uh, electronically. Let's see. Da, 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 da. So I'm gonna mediation and indemnification, just, you know, if you, if there's any controversy, um, then, there would be a mediator, um, indemnification, you're holding the brokerage harmless on account of any losses during the, uh, during the listing agreement and providing that we are not at fault. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, disclaimer. Okay, so we are real estate agents. We are not tax attorneys or inspectors or anything of that nature. So if there's other professionals that are needed during the listing time and or uh, while we're under contract with a buyer, those professionals need to be contacted. Cost of third-party services or products. Again, there are some things that are uh, going to be, uh, you know, Oh, what do I, what do I, I don't want to say farmed out, but I guess I'll use that word to a third party, such as, again, the title and the survey. Um, and, you know, those two items are your expense. There are some other third party things that would be the buyer's expense. Uh, lease of property. I know nine times out of 10 or 99% of my time, my sellers aren't looking to lease. So if you are, let me know. Um, severability, that just means that uh, if I cross any of the paragraphs off in this agreement, that the rest of it holds together. Um, notice, if you would like to cancel this agreement or if you are under, well, if you want to cancel this agreement, please reach out to me uh, and we can discuss it. Um, I don't have any, there's um, no like cancellation policy with Century 21. I would just ask that um, if you want to cancel it for a reason that you're not happy with me that you certainly talk to me way ahead of time before you get to that point of just wanting to cancel. Um, if you want to cancel a purchase contract, that is something that you would have to discuss with your attorney because a purchase contract is then a legal binding document and only your attorney can cancel it. I cannot. I didn't pass the bar. I also did not go to law school. Um, all right. Then that is basically the entire listing agreement. So I'll have you, you know, sign and date on the right hand side of this page seven. And then I'm going to move into all of the disclosures. Um, oh, wait, there's one page in between, um, which we may or may not be doing, but I'm going to go over it. It's the private listing network authorization. And this is where it goes into the MLS and agents can see it but it does not go on to Zillow or Trulia or Realtor yet. Um, that's when that's called the standard uh, network when we move it over 
there where it gets published. But the private listing network is used a lot of times if sellers are not quite ready to list and just kind of maybe want to generate some um, activity ahead of time. It You may see signs that are coming soon, um, either in advertising or signs on properties that are coming soon. That's what this private network is about. And during this time, you can allow me to do certain things or not, your choice. Um, things such as placing the yard sign, which again, I always, I do recommend. It does get attention and it would have a coming soon rider with it. Um, you can allow me to place additional, or excuse me, not additional, the advertising or marketing activities ahead of time. So for example, all the different horsey websites that I advertise on, I can go ahead and get those going as a coming soon. And hopefully then leads would come in, uh, you know, directly to me and my, my team and, of course, we are going to be most interested in, you know, responding to those leads because we want to get your property sold. Um, and then we can either choose to show the property or not. Again, um, depending on the condition. And I always tend to want to ask the other, like the buyer, if they can, hey, can you see past some personal items? Because that's generally what people use a private network for if they're not quite ready if they're not done purging their house and, and, you know, we can show it, but it just not, might not be looking its best, so to speak. So, um, and then the last part is just stating that we're going to put it within, we're going to move it from the private network to the standard network and they give a couple choices on time. All of this can be modified easily with a listing modification, um, page that is a one page thing. Uh, I, I can have my assistant fill that out and send it. So if we mark anything here that needs to be changed down the road, the listing modification is, will take care of that, no problem. Then I'm going to go into <clears throat> the disclosures. And the first, the first one is like four pages long. Well, um, it's the Residential Real Property Disclosure Report. It asks you 24 yes, no, or not applicable questions. And of course, I'm, I'll let you read through that yourself. But the main thing to know about um, for this disclosure is if we know there is something wrong with the property, we need to go ahead and disclose it. And specifically, if it's something you know that is going to potentially make a buyer change their mind about making an offer, that's, you know, that's the big ticket items. I always recommend over disclosing versus under disclosing because it just kind of covers yourself. And if you have any questions as to how to fill this out, I do recommend that you contact your attorney about it. Um, the main questions here are, are you aware of, and then it goes through this list. You do not have to go, um, searching for, oh, is there, you know, a crack in the foundation or are there any issues with doors or, you know, you don't have to go looking for problems, but if you're aware of it, we need to disclose it. Uh, and then if you are aware of any issues on the top of page two is where we would uh, indicate which line and then give a little further explanation about it. And for example, I mean, lots of times with my older farmhomes, I, uh, I mark that, like for number three, I'm aware of flooding or recurring leakage problems in the crawl space or basement. A lot of times I have that, you know, hey, the basement or the cellar gets seepage in heavy rain. So that would just be an example for you. So um, I'm going to then move to the disclosure of radon. So if you're aware that you have high levels of radon, we need to disclose that. But if you are not aware of any levels of high levels of radon, or if you do not have any records, then, um, you know, we need, we'll just mark whichever statement or statements are true under where it says seller disclosures A through D. So read those four and mark whichever pertain. Uh, Lead-based paint. If your house is, was built in 1978 or before, we need to fill this page out as well. And again, it's whether you have knowledge of lead um, paint or 
pipes in the house or any reports or not. Um, then I'm moving on to the affiliated business arrangement disclosure. And this is an acknowledgement form basically stating that Century 21 Affiliated has um, oh, sister companies such as a title company, an insurance company, a, lo a lender, and you do not have to use any one of those companies, but you can. And certainly um, if you do, since we are related, my office would get a little bit of a kickback. And since money is involved, I need to disclose the relationship to you. Uh, and then last but not least, is the seller service pledge. And this just goes over 21 wonderful things I'm going to do for you and your property. Last but not least, most important, number 21, is market your property to farm and ranch type buyers. So again, it's just an acknowledgement form, just need your uh, signature on this page as well. So that should wrap up the listing agreement in a nutshell. Of course, like I mentioned, happy to answer any and all questions that you have. So give me a call after you've uh, had a chance to watch this and let's discuss it further. Thank you so much for choosing me as your realtor. And uh, yes, talk soon. Bye-bye.